The last Dark Horse comic we covered was Tales of the Jedi, which was something of an anthology book, with two miniseries, each loosely connected, but otherwise standalone. This time we're taking on a semi-anthology book based around R2-D2 and C-3PO and their adventures prior to the events of the original trilogy. I'm not really able to find any information on the pitch for this book. However, I was able to find some info on the main creative team. Dan Thorsland had edited a bunch of comics for DC, including the Superman line, before coming over to Dark Horse, with the droids books basically being the few books that he has written. Bill Hughes, the other main artist on the book, had primarily worked with Dark Horse and other books prior to this, of various varieties. The other big artist on the book, Ian Gibson, had a more substantial earlier career. He had worked with 2000 AD, doing art for Robo Hunter and Judge Dredd, before getting his first US work at DC, doing art on the relaunch of Mr. Miracle after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, aside from Dan Thorsland doing the writing, we do have one issue written by writer Wyndham. Not to get too far of my, ahead of myself and ahead of the show, writer would basically go on to be Dark Horse's liaison with Lucasfilm, handling continuity between the various books, and essentially becoming Dark Horse's own Keeper of the Holocron. Approximately five years prior to the Battle of Yavin, R2-D2 and C-3PO are part of the household of Baron Peter Rees, a starship designer on the planet Kalarba. The comic goes through a series of episodic adventurers featuring the two droids as they go through these various adventures as part of the household, or in a few cases on their own. These stories often involve a gangster called Olag Grek as an antagonist. His schemes are normally one-offs, introduced and wrapped up within a single issue, with Grek or some other antagonist ending the issue on some variation of... No, really. I've generally refrained from issue-by-issue, issue, blow-by-blows of the comics within the show, partly to make sure the show clearly falls within the bounds of fair use, and partially because I want you to read the comics. The stories here are standalone enough and so tenuously connected that, to recap it, I'd basically be doing a Linkara blow-by-blow. We have our first assassin droids outside of IG-88, with C3PX, and we learn that non-assassin droids can be pre-programmed into being assassin droids, and that the droids will have knowledge of their old programming and may resent this reprogramming, as is C3PX's case. For our favorite droids, we learn that Captain Antilles, their master as of the start of A New Hope, is not their first master. For a unspecified period of time, they were in the household of Baron Peteriz. Of all the Dark Horse Star Wars comics I've covered thus far, this is the first comic that really feels like it's aimed for kids. Dark Empire is more serious and gritty, aimed for older teens, and Tales from the Jedi is aimed at a PG-13 level. 
This, on the other hand, works as a story that can be read by kids, but without talking down to them. This is a short, fun, episodic series. It's not trying to tell an epic story in either the more personal, close sense of the word, um, like with the Tales of the Jedi saga of Nomi Sunrider, or well, something more grandiose, like with the Dark Empire comics. It's just a bunch of fun little one-offs. Not much spectacle, just little one-off stories, and it works. And unlike the earlier YA novel series that I'm skipping because nobody considers it canon, it doesn't contradict any of the films. Like, for example, from that series, um, contradicts the fact that Yoda kept Dagobah a secret, or adding the idea of the Emperor inexplicably having a three-eyed son. That, that's a thing that happened from the junior middle grade, I guess is the term I'd use to call it, novel series that Scholastic put out. This also means the consequence of all of this. That of all the Star Wars comics that I've read thus far, this is the one that holds up str the strongest in individual issues. Yeah, they've all been collected in a trade, but if you stumble across a single issue somewhere, whether in a quarter bin or at a flea market, it's worth picking up because you're going to get a good read and you're not going to be left hanging in the middle of a story. It has a beginning, middle, and end, and everything plays out nicely. Now, as with Tales of the Jedi, this is the second Star Wars series we've had from Dark Horse that could have been just a straight-up ongoing book, as opposed to a bunch of little mini-series. However, at the time, Dark Horse really wasn't doing ongoings at all outside of Dark Horse Presents, so they didn't pick up on this concept. Now, next month, we'll be seeing how Han proposed to Leia in the courtship of Princess Leia. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.